Despite opposition from various groups, the federal government still brought in Chinese medical experts to help Nigeria fight the coronavirus outbreak. And as the world continues to preach social distancing as a way to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the Katsina state government has lifted the suspension on, suspension rather, on Friday. Congressional prayers with immediate effect. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. Now, despite opposition from various groups such as the Nigerian Medical Association and the National Association of Resident Doctors, a 15-member medical team from China that had been designated to help Nigeria fight the outbreak of the virus in the country has arrived. Now, the team came with medical supplies to complement the efforts of the government to contain the pandemic. In a reaction to this, the Nigeria Medical Association has vowed that its members would not interact or collaborate with a Chinese medical team. I will be joined uh, via Skype by Adeshina Fagbero. He is a legal practitioner. And uh, via phone, we will have the company of uh, public health specialist Choma Wakama. But first, Let's take a quick reaction from the Lagos State Chairman of the NMA. Well, uh, the NMA position is clear, and that has been well put in place by the national NMA. And uh, the fact is clear too, that we don't need the Chinese uh, expatriates here. Uh, we currently have uh, over 250 uh, positive uh, uh, patients to COVID-19 and uh, so far we have not uh, informed the government that we are overwhelmed. However, yes, we have continued to ask the government of our need to provide the protective equipment. Uh, donation from uh, other foreign country is acceptable. However, we don't need the manpower. We are here to even use 1% uh, of our manpower. The uh, patient at the IDH in Yaba are uh, being attended to by doctors that are working in Yaba. And we have 27 hospitals in Lagos. And the same is what is happening in Abuja and other centers that have this uh, COVID 19 patient. Most of the doctors are still available to support when there is need. And they are working in all those general hospitals. Uh, uh, if you're talking about the experience of the Chinese people, we have had a treatment that has been working for our people. So far, all the death that we have had have been people that are working for our people. So far, all the death that we have had have been people that have refused treatment or refused isolation. So, the reality is that whatever we are doing currently at our isolation center is working and we are having a result. And indeed, the WHO has commended us for that. So, uh, this attitude of government only shows why the health system has been failing. Because if you don't listen to the experts to make decisions, then you make wrong decisions. Uh, it surprised me when the uh, Honorable Minister continued to mention NME, as if he's not a member of NME. He is a member of NME, he's there because he's a doctor. If today he's suspended, he will not remain as a Minister of Health, because he's there representing us as a doctor. And we think he should have a better respect for his, uh, um, uh, uh, his, colleagues. his colleagues. And the reality is, and we still state it, just like NME has stated, we don't need the expertise of the Chinese to handle the COVID-19 as it stands today. Well, we, we have a responsibility to the public. And uh, we will not take the irresponsibility of the government to affect the public. However, that final answer is left to the National Executive Council. Uh, we, in considering whatever we are doing, consider our patient as a priority. And also the safety and welfare of our colleagues is also paramount. Whatever technology the Chinese people have, are technology that are being used. But it may not be wrong if enemy actually 
take government to court on this. The CECC EC has no right over the inhabitants of Nigeria. The responsibility of the health of the people that live in this country lies in the hands of the doctors here, well represented by enemy. So it will be an insult, or it is an insult on us for government to bring some exercise against our uh, will uh, to come and run uh, the health system in this country. If the Chinese people feel that we're not uh, attending to them well, they can as well just take away their uh, workers and bring them back after COVID-19 uh, pandemic is over. We don't need their expertise for now. However, if we need it, then we will request for it. NME has not requested for it. MBCN has not requested for it. The politicization of our health uh, system is what has been pushing us backward. Government should use this opportunity to improve the health system and also the welfare of the health care provider. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Oz. Okay, I think he already said it. Thank you very much, Doctor. Apparently, the NMA is not shifting ground from the Lagos State um, chapter to the national chapter. I actually spoke with the national president just moments before this program commenced, and uh, he said that he maintains the original position that the association took. Let's have a conversation about this and uh, the way forward because we are in a crisis and decisions need to be taken and how it affects us is what we're going to x-ray uh, today on the program. I have joining us via Skype, um, addition of Thagbero Baron. Um, he is um, a lawyer and a politician. And on the phone, we have Choma Wakam, a public health specialist. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Thank you. Let me start with you, um, Adeshina. There's been loud criticism of the move. Now, the NMA president and a whole lot of persons have opposed it. Yes, the federal government went ahead to bring in these Chinese medical personnel and supplies. Why do you think the government chose to ignore the position of stakeholders? Well, whether it's the fact that the government ignored stakeholders um, is not, I'm, I'm not sure whether I want to comment directly on that because I know there is an emergency. Um, we are looking, every country in the world is looking for every support from the best possible sources. Um, the Commissioner for Health in Lagos State uh, mentioned that particularly Lagos needed um, um, molecular biologists and logisticians. You see, health service provision is more than just doctors. It's more than, there's a specialty for everything. And what people are doing all over the world is trying to pull specialty together and pull capacity together. Now, um, would it have made a difference if these doctors came from the U.S. or from Italy? I, you know, maybe, maybe some people's sentiment against the fact that the Chinese is another issue. I think the government needed to do act quickly and swiftly. And I think the Chinese have had the biggest and the strongest experience, right, when it comes to dealing with this virus. Um, I'm not sure when, you know, it's it's almost like, you know, when you want somebody to get a job done and what you're asking for first is where he's coming from. I yeah, but, the, but, but there are concerns just, that some persons yeah. say might have some of relevance. They are saying, the argument is first, that they were not consulted before the decision was taken as key stakeholders. Second, that they have not complained that they are overwhelmed, that they cannot deal with the situation enough to warrant the entrance of these Chinese uh, medical personnel. Thirdly, okay. they're also saying that there is a correlation. How true that is remains to be seen. But the president says there is a correlation between the spike in the number of cases in Italy and the arrival of Chinese personnel with their supplies. So when you take all of these into co um, um, consideration, also the welfare, you know, the um, personal protective kits that they keep talking about, all of the things that they need to do their work, they feel they're not 
all there yet. So why do we need Chinese doctors? Okay, the question is that I don't think the Chinese doctors are coming empty-handed. No, they came with supplies. In fact, I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to come here asking for kit. Secondly, um, the data in terms of when the Chinese went into uh, Italy was it the Chinese doctors that caused the spike in Italy, or just engagement with ordinary citizens in China? So we have to get facts, facts right. And then when the enemy says that they are not overwhelmed, it's not a question of overwhelmed. You know, it's not every doctor that can treat this, that can be uh, useful in this kind of pandemic, right? It's, and then there are some, like I said, going I'm going by what the Lagos State uh, um, a commissioner said. The Lagos State commissioner said they didn't just invite all comers or anything like that, that they invited specific skills, molecular biologists or logisticians. Now, the question is, the NMA, you know, how are they addressing that? Do they have enough molecular biologists? Do they know what's the, you know, some of the data, I think the NMA, to be honest, um, I wouldn't want to say they are politicizing it. They are protecting a turf. They are, they are protecting their territory. Uh, but having said, they were, let's be mindful of the fact that I think they were on strike at some point in time. You know, so, you know, if they, they were on strike... They threatened strike, but they, time, they, they shelved it afterwards. Well, you see, they, that's that's the issue. You know, you you, you see, they went. It's, it's so now this agitation too. I mean, look, it, you can't appropriate and reprobate. All right, let's let's when bring in Choma I... into the conversation and get her perspective on this. Choma, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, C could you give us your? You've, you've heard um, the barrister talk. What's your perception of this? Um, okay, um, he ha he has made. Um, valid point, uh, but what I what I think I would I would add to that is that um, the challenge for enemy and doctors in Nigeria mostly is that we are having a problem of um, we like a trust issues with the Nigerian government. We also have this issue of like a perception that um, protocol was this. We were not part of what was done. We were not, you know, put in the working of the whole thing. It just came up. Chinese doctors are coming. Also, from my own part, I would say... Hello? I'm with you. Go ahead. Okay, because I think I'm echoing. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So, from my own part... I would say that um, we as Nigerian doctors are doing our best in the front line. We have issues prior to COVID-19, and most of it is based on the fact that our health system is not working. It has a lot of lapses. Doctors are not compensated. Health workers are not compensated. And um, we don't have enough protective equipment to work with. And so I don't think it's shocking that our reaction is not so favorable or welcoming to the fact that, okay, these ones who are in the home front, you're not recognizing that then out of nowhere you're bringing Chinese doctors you know, I but think should this be a matter, Chama, should this be a matter of ego, really, considering that we are um, in an emergency? Um, if you also look at it, what do they have to lose by having additional knowledge being brought in, yeah. into the country? Yeah. The truth is, we don't, we don't have anything to lose. That's Every it. additional knowledge and um, manpower is necessary. But the thing is, we still have, if it's about manpower, we have enough. For my own part, I'm saying my own part because I followed the conversation from when it came out and when it was explained. It, I think it's proper that when you are doing something like this, you should be clear from the beginning. All right. These are, these are the people we're bringing and this is why we are bringing them. So that miscommunication was just the main issue for me. 
All right, let's go back to additional. Um, so let's talk about that subtle threat in the earlier statement by the NMA president insisting that they might reconsider their, you know, their participation in the fight against uh, coronavirus should the federal government go ahead. Now the federal government has done what they initially said they are going to do. What worries you about that threat that is still just waving in the air at the moment? Well, I mean, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to sound insulting, but you know, how can anyone, anyone, at this point in time, who is a professional, sworn to an oath, say they are going to withdraw their support? I mean, what does it mean? What exactly does it mean? I mean, most of us now are not even going into hospitals, and if you go into a hospital now, you are even scared of catching something else. The truth of the matter is that, you know, look, this whole COVID-19 episode has taught all of us that nobody is indispensable. You see, and nobody is, um, nobody should um, arrogate. You see, the health service delivery system is, is not only doctors. You have nurses, you have physiotherapists, you have, and it's, you have a whole raft of medical service providers. It's one whole system. And I think that at times of crisis and at times of war and at times of a national um, uh, you know, existential threats, people should set aside, you know, personal, let's get the job done first, right? If they truly called off their strike, then they would not be making such statements. I think there's an issue with the fact that, you see, when people, I mean, maybe like, you know, Choma, you know, made it some point, you know, and I do respect, you know, uh, uh, some of what they said, there's been a miscommunication, quite all right. You know, but you don't communicate with, you know, you can't, you, that, that in the first place, the relationship, relationships determine communication. All right, let, let's, let's, let's look so, at uh, the fact that they are already here. And then, yes. again, the fact that the federal government is saying they're going to stay in isolation for 14 days as is mandatory. Yes. Isn't that yes. time wasted, really, considering the expedience of uh, uh, the situation? Yeah, you, you see, it's not time wasted. That is number one. That is a protocol. That is an international protocol for the pandemic, regardless of whatever is happening. Or once you cross a border, once you enter a new jurisdiction, a new territory, you shall be quarantined for 14 days. Those guys are doctors. They've had the experience of engaging with the issues, and I'm sure they must have been, some of them might have been exposed. But the fact that one is, expo has, is in the cause of doing this, every single doctor, every single person, not let me even say doctor, working on this issue, might or might not have been exposed, right? So, you know, when you travel, that's a procedure that has been done. So. That 14 days will have to go through, but you want to wait until when it's an outbreak, then you will invite them. You will still have to wait for that 14 days. So the earlier, the better. And look, US is even importing stuff from China now, they are, and they were sworn enemies before. You see, people have to mature. States have to mature. Association has have to mature, you see. And you need to look at this thing from a broader, less, you know, personal, less um, microscopic perspective, you know. It's all about the, 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 the people who might be infected. It's all about the patients. It's all about those who might be infected. It's all about the vulnerable. All right. It's not about the doctors. All right, sir. Let's 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 bring in Choma again uh, into this conversation and just take a look at uh, other reactions that are coming. The People's Democratic Party, uh, popularly regarded as the opposition party in this country, have come up to say that Nigerians should hold President Muhammad Buhari responsible. Should there be any surge um, in the number of infections in this country, starting from when the uh, Chinese uh, came in? What's your reaction to that? Do they have a point, or are they unnecessarily heating up the polity? Um, okay, so here's what I was saying. The opposition is opposition, so we expect some kind of controversy and all that. I am not clear, and I cannot certainly say that any doctors coming in here is going to increase the surge 
in COVID-19. I think that's a conspiracy theory. And, uh, but I think, as I said, the challenge is that we have a trust issue in Nigeria. We have a systemic problem. You need to learn to be clear with your um, citizens. You need to learn to follow protocol. Bring in the people who should be brought in. This is the health sector. So it doesn't make sense that you just keep those you know, who are like the government bodies in the health care, not just the doctors. We have the nursing council. We have other um, members of the health care body. I mean, those people should be brought in, talked to, so that when issues like this that the PDP is talking about arise, at least you have um, a kind of backup from the medical body saying, oh, no, we discussed this, and we've seen why we need these people. We've seen what they are coming to do. You know, when you have that kind of professional um, backup, I, I think there's nothing much to worry about. So for me, now, I, I can't be clear on that to say this is what has been. I know there are pretty theories of when they attacked this meeting, the spike was up and all that. I'm not all going right. to do that because I, am, I don't have to get statistics. All right, and Chuma, you talked about theory. There is one I want to put forward to you. The, the position uh, that is being expressed, that there seems to be something tied with the supplies that are coming in. Is it that there is something that the government is not telling us? Maybe the fact that the supplies are attached to the presence of these experts in the country. What do you say? Okay, um, so I read some documents that were online that were um, released by the company in question that is supplying the doctors. I also read what the federal and the, I think the Senate put up about this, about the, um, the government said their work would be. And um, I, according to what they said, actually, they said they are bringing in medical equipment, Chinese experts or doctors are going to help us, you know, use in here. So for me, my question was, what are they going to be teaching us here that they cannot teach us for or uh, leveraging on those technologies? I think there is there are different I'm talking to you right now and I'm not I'm not live in this picture. Okay. There are sure. other means of communicating to people without any person. So if you want to teach us how to use certain things, are there no other ways to go about that? So, so I, I think you have a point people, there. You, you have a very valid point. Let's, let's ask Adeshina about it. Uh, the position that Chama is putting up now, that, I mean, if they want to teach us, we have technology, just the way I'm talking to you, from your home, you're talking to the world. Yeah. So couldn't they have done no. something similar other than have these men come in, considering the concerns? Some, whether yeah. you see them as valid or not, there were concerns that, I mean, these are professionals in their field. Yes. See, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a doctor, uh, but I'm a development specialist. Um, so my PhD is not in medicine, it's in <laughs> human, develop, uh, human development. What your says is right. But you see, when you're going to get support from people. Um, it comes both in technical know-how and kit, which is equipment. Um, and um, at times, both the technical know-how, you know, dovetails into the equipment. And then when you say somebody is a specialist in a particular field, right, you want to benefit from his specialty, and if he has had certain experiences in certain things, you want to benefit from them. But that is true. Someone might even come in and throw in a spanner in all our discussion and say, well, you can't do a perfect uh, simulation of support from abroad in something like medicine, which is different from what we are doing here, except you have 5G. And then now you bring in the 5G. <laughs> and then there's a the 5G controversy that and we have going, you yeah. Some, you know, uh -huh. So, but Chama is right. But to the extent that, yes, that there are certain things they can teach, and maybe there needs to be some mentoring and some hand-holding. The thing about teaching from online and abroad is that, you know, is that, look, um, there's so little how much you can be held responsible for what you teach. And they're not really coming here as teachers. They've had experience, right? There are areas where Nigeria, the world all over, we, we, we know about this technical assistance thing. Um, uh, whether uh, 
Buhari, well, she's right too about the PDP. Uh, you know, I'm a politician myself. I'm not a member of APC. <laughs> and that's uh, how I, I met I, you. <laughs> that am I a member of PDP, right? Uh, but what I would say is that politicians will be politicians, yes. But you see, you cannot blame anybody if there is a spike until you do your research and you have the data and you know the reason why there is a spike. All right, um, I'm afraid I have to interject. We're, we're out of time. Thank you so much uh, for your thoughts for this segment. We'll be coming back to you in a bit. Are you serious? Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Chioma, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you. All right, we'll go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll be looking at the developments in Katsina and Kogi State. They are stepping down the social restriction uh, orders. Is this wise? Stay with us. <laughs> 